Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us for today's Tech Forum session. I'm Kalpana Patel, Product Coordinator at BookNet Canada. Welcome to Future Books, sharing ideas on books and art publishing. Before we get started, BookNet Canada acknowledges that its operations are remote and our colleagues contribute their work from the traditional territories of the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Ojibwe of Fort William First Nation, the Anishinaabek, the Haudenosaunee, the Wyanda, the Mi'kmaq, and the Métis, the original nations and peoples of the lands we now call Beaton, Brampton, Guelph, Halifax, Thunder Bay, Toronto, and Vaughan. BookNet endorses the calls to action for, from the Truth and Reconciliation Commission of Canada and supports an ongoing shift from gatekeeping to space making in the book industry. The book industry has long been an industry of gatekeeping. Anyone who works at any stage of the book supply chain carries a responsibility to serve readers by publishing, promoting, and supplying works that represent the wide extent of human experiences and identities in all that complicated intersectionality. We at BookNet are committed to working with our partners in the industry as we move towards a framework that supports space making, which ensures that marginalized creators and professionals all have the opportunity to contribute, work, and lead. For our webinar today, if you're having difficulties with Zoom or any or have any tech related questions, please put your questions in the chat or you can email techforum at booknetcanada.ca. We are providing live ASL and closed captioning for this presentation. To see the captions, please find the show subtitle button in the Zoom menu at the bottom of your screen. If during the presentation you have questions for us, please use the Q&A panel found in the bottom menu. Lastly, we'd like to remind attendees of the Code of Conduct. Please do not harass speakers, hosts, or attendees, or record these sessions. We have a zero tolerance policy. You can find the entire Code of Conduct at bnctechforum.ca slash code of conduct. Please do be kind, be inclusive, be respectful of others, including their privacy, be aware of your words and actions, and please report any violations to Tech Forum at Booknet Canada. Now I will introduce our speakers. Pia Pohl is publisher and co-director at Valis. She started there in 2008 as a coordinator and editor. She studied English language and culture and American studies at the University of Amsterdam. Her focus is on bottom-up initiatives in cities, urban development, and public space. Pia also explores the possibilities of digital publishing and has co-edited two volumes on the subject. Besides her work at Valis, she delivers lectures and is a recurring guest teacher at the Royal Academy of Art at The Hague. Lotte Schroeder is a designer and image maker from Amsterdam. Yessa Muller is an Amsterdam-based bookseller with a background in contemporary art. In 2021, she founded Yessa Press, an agency and distributor for independent publishers. And now I'm gonna hand it over to Pia. Thank you, Kaltner, for that wonderful uh, introduction. And uh, thank you, everyone who uh, uh, showed up to be uh, part of this session. Much appreciated. Um, Kaltner said a little bit about my background, but I'd like to introduce myself and especially Valise, the company um, uh, that I work for with uh, a little bit more extensively. Uh, Valise is a, a small independent publishing house located in Amsterdam in the Netherlands. And uh, it was started by my colleague Astrid Forstermans uh, 20 years ago. And I joined it about 15 or 16 years ago. Uh, in the meantime, uh, the group uh, that we run Valleys with uh, has grown significantly, started out uh, just Astrid, then I joined, and now we are six in the office. And uh, we work together with an uh, uh, extremely large network of freelancers of up to, uh, I think, 20 or 30 people um, at, the at the same time. Um, our subject matter ranges from contemporary art, theory, critique, uh, design, also urban affairs, and uh, all the, all the um, how do you call that? Um, all the topics that uh, that uh, cross over between those. Uh, our books offer critical reflection. They uh, they aim to have a sort of interdisciplinary inspiration, and we uh, really try to see if we can establish 
um, a connection between different cultural disciplines and sort of um, social cultural questions that are going on. For us, a core value is to try to root the projects that we do into society or into societal issues as much as we can. Um, I think worldwide, we're best known uh, for our titles on the necessity of gardening and ABC of art, botany and cultivation. Um, as the title uh, is sort of self-explanatory, it's about uh, gardening and art uh, and how the garden uh, has, has been an inspiration for artists all throughout the times. Another book that's uh, uh, pretty well known is Wicked Arts Assignments. Wicked Arts Assignments is a collection of the best or craziest or most inspirational art assignments um, from teachers and students, um, everyone involved in the teaching of the arts. And uh, the third uh, really well-known one is called Caps Lock. Um, this is a, a, a book by Ruben Pater uh, about the hold that capitalism has on um, design. Um, we publish anywhere between 10 and 20 new books per year. And uh, what I really want to talk about today is uh, the book that we did on the occasion of our 20 year anniversary called Future Books. Um, we'll dive into it a little bit more uh, uh, later. Um, yeah, this book is really important for us because we felt like we needed to do something because uh, we need to mark our 20 year anniversary and we thought it would be boring or uh, too introverted to, to make a Libra Abicorum or just uh, make a book about Valise and everything that we've done and, and everybody what we work with, which of course for us would be really fun, but uh, is not as interesting uh, maybe for people who don't know us or who are not uh, our close friends. So we thought, okay, what can we do what is interesting for us um, uh, to publish and how can we commemorate this event for ourselves? Um, so what we decided to do instead is um, make this book called Future Books. Uh, subtitle is Sharing Ideas on Books uh, and Art Publishing because we wanted to um, sort of extend the discussion that we have here at Valise, where we sit at the table and reflect on our practice and think, okay, what are we doing? Does it make sense what we're doing? Uh, what is what is publishing? What does it mean? How is it evolving? Um, et cetera, et cetera. So what we did is uh, think, okay, who do we know um, that who can write about this subject or who has a say or has an idea about this? And then we thought to ourselves, actually, um, basically our entire network, our entire Valise network probably has something to say about this. And wouldn't it be fun if we include these people whom uh, we've worked with or whom we've known or who have written um, uh, uh, with us before? So we sent out an open call uh, to about 500 people. And um, some we knew really well and others uh, were maybe a little bit more loose in our network, but we felt that they uh, would have their own unique perspective or um, uh, and hopefully would contribute to this book. So um, I think the common denominator between all the people that we sent the open call to was like, you have a specific relationship to uh, books. And we sent them a single question. And we said, when you think about the future, try to establish what future you envision in five years, in 20 years, or in 72 years. And you can pick uh, one of the three and uh, do with it as you please. And then we thought, okay, well, maybe that um, is too broad. Uh, will that, will that uh, lead to a sort of coherent book? So we thought, uh, we thought, well, for some additional orientation or direction, um, we might give them two perspectives. And the first perspective that we gave was, what does this future look like in the short, the medium, or the long term? And um, what would we need in this future to lead a good life? And then specifically, what could the role of one or several aspects of art books and publishing be, of course? And the second sort of a uh, guide that we gave was, could you start from a theme that is close to your heart and how this is tr translated in uh, books or in publishing in the short, medium or long term? And then we thought, we'll send it out and uh, we'll just wait and see uh, what comes back. And of course, it's 
super nerve wracking when you do something like this because we knew that the 20 year anniversary uh, was coming in. Um, I think when we sent this, it was in December that we sent this out and we knew that we were going to celebrate this in early June, which um, if you have any familiarity with book publishing is an extremely short time to um, make an entire book. So we told everyone, okay, you have sort of over the Christmas break to come up with a contribution. Um, and then hopefully in the month of January, we'll have all this text. And of course, we were super enthusiastic about the idea and we thought, oh, this is going to be great. But what if like nobody sends anything in, then we end up with like a flyer with us saying, yeah, book publishing is really important. And here are two other people who also think so. Or um, what if people don't do as we, what we ask and, and we get a sort of random array of contributions that really have nothing to do with each other, don't answer any questions, and we won't know what to do with it. But thankfully, this didn't happen at all. Um, in early January, the first uh, contribution started pouring in, and uh, in the end, we received well over 100, which for an open call sent to 500 people is a really great response rate. Um, and it was overwhelmingly beautiful and inspirational uh, to see what we got. And um, in terms of practicality for us, it meant like collect everything, read everything. And instantly between uh, the both of us, my colleague Asit Forstemans and myself, um, and uh, I have to admit that Asit did, really did the, the gist of work in this, is uh, start editing these texts. And that's normally something that um, we are involved in, but also use a lot of freelance editors for. But now it was really us saying, okay, this text is great, but it needs to be a little bit more of this, or at least we have a little bit less of that. And we really try to... Um, and that's also what we ask people it's like, don't make this about release, but makes the, make this about book publishing as a whole or art book publishing as a whole. So if a text was really focused on valise, we tried to see if we could make it a little bit more broad or a little bit more abstract further away from valise as a subject. Um, I think there were one or two contributions where we were like, uh, I don't know if this is appropriate for the book. Um, maybe it needs some really heavy editing, but um, of course, the great thing was that these were all uh, from people that we had some form of relationship to. So it was much easier to say like, hey, maybe you can do a little bit of this or you can do a little bit of that. And people were fine with uh, making these edits. So in the end, we, um, yeah, we had a really beautiful stack of contributions and we were going back and forth and back and forth in uh, editing these. And then, of course, came the step, um, how do we translate this into an actual book. Um, and that's uh, something where we also thought, okay, it would be great to actually involve our uh, network and honor the people that we work with as much as we can. And um, we decided that it would be really cool to ask actually uh, a group of designers who are not usually working together, but ask each of them to maybe design a choir and uh, do it in their own way. And we would have sort of these master pages. Um, and, and of course the size of the book was set and we knew that most of it, most of it was going to be in black and white, um, but really try to see if the, the sort of thematic lines that uh, we were identifying in the contribution would also um, be translated into, um, into maybe the design a little bit more. And maybe that's a good time to also invite Lotte uh, Schroeder, who is actually one of the designers of the book. She, she wrote a contribution uh, for it as well, and she designed the uh, cover to uh, explain a little bit more about what that process was like for, for her and uh, um, um, yeah, what it was like working with such a um, maybe unstandard uh, assignment. Lotte, can I give the floor to you? Sure, of course. Hi. Hi all, I'm Lotta. Thank you, Pia. Hi, Jesse. Hi, everyone. Um, yeah, um, it, it, I, let me start at the beginning <laughs> because it was a 20-year anniversary, but Valise has been around for 20 years, so there has been a five-year, a 10-year, and as you can see, a 12 and a half year anniversary, um, which for the 12 and a half years, I made a I gave them a copy of a Philip uh, K. Dick book that's actually titled 
valise, but it's with an S at the end. But I thought it was a, a nice reappropriation of an existing book, uh, rewriting the existing text, but then to celebrate the publishing house. Um, so that's been lying around the office for a really long time. And then when the 20 year anniversary book came up, uh, they asked me if I could reinterpretate, yeah, this this hand drawn collage cover that I made. Um, so that's what I did. <laughs> of course, lacking all the skills that all these beautiful classic sci fi novels have, but yeah, trying to just like stay stay true to what the original book was. Uh, I started sketching. Uh, as and as Pia said, you know, it's a short time. So being on the road, trying to fit in somewhere, some time to to work on it. Uh, so yeah, it's a it's a mix of, um, yeah, like hand drawn, kind of like weird landscapey images that, yeah, maybe have no no real connection to publishing, but like give, are about the future or about like dreaming away a little bit. And uh, yeah. The book is designed by. Uh, I I have to now uh, check my notes. I, I'm, if it's seven people, so it's seven different designers that all got asked to do a section. So I did the cover and some like of the introduction notes. But so these are all spreads, all designed by different designers. Uh, unfortunately, we didn't get the chance to really maybe like work on it together or yeah exercise actually what what it would mean to assemble this book as a group of designers because that's something I've never I mean experience of course working together one-on-one -on -one, but what if you have to like work with a group of seven people uh, but there is another book coming out by Felice that that deals with this so there's a there's a chance to uh, experience that still but um yeah so for me it's um it's just a, a continuation of my use of uh, yeah my own imagery and like using hand-drawn typography and yeah just like creating a bit more of a maybe open atmosphere to what like future books is also for me as a designer I'm more interested in maybe image making or like yeah creating more of an atmosphere than really uh, literally reacting on the subject so also my contribution I'm sorry I don't have it in front of me is also more about work ethics and and work relationships and uh yeah how they change and how i would like to see them improved in the future and not so necessarily about books or book designing or about what that practice kind of means but um yeah uh i don't know what to say more about it it's pretty straightforward so yeah maybe i can ask you a question uh, about it lotte because um maybe to explain a little bit further when we received all the contributions we started um of course thinking about um how should we order these um these things because they are from people with such different backgrounds i think the youngest person contributing is um was four at the time and i think the eldest was probably like 90 or 89 or something uh, in this range so um, it was so diverse and we really started looking like what what are themes that we can recognize and I'll dive more into the, the content of that later but um, in, in terms of ordering we found all these themes that were maybe now that I look back at it sometimes uh, a little bit vague but felt very clear at the time is that something that you incorporated in your design thinking also or um, because you have a very I think particular style and you work a lot with with uh drawings is that something that you did something with or is it more that you think okay this is the size I have to do something how does that go for you yeah because I think when we started already when you uh, you guys asked me uh there it was not really clear actually what the content was going to be it was really at the beginning so it was almost like a a blank book and there was an intent of course and there is a title and there was of course already the kind of like previously established kind of dummy or you know something to build further on but I think there wasn't no content yet to re react react upon and also for me in these cases yeah I mean that's going to be like a hundred different types of like input or like uh, points of view which are like impossible to 
to all like fit into like one kind of like over overarching design um so no yeah it started a bit like a blank blank page so just to be which was also nice I, I also I've never experienced this that you just do the 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 cover and then it was also for all the designers like a real big like oh my god what's going to look like how everything is also going to work together we were very curious how each individual contribution was going to kind of how much are they going to distinguish from each other or is there actually some similarities you know are we all like in from the same bubble <laughs> or do we do have some like you know uh authentic inputs but uh yeah no uh so yeah I, I think it's uh I didn't really I, yeah I just started with very not very little but yeah it's a book about the future <laughs> so that's that's right you're I think for us of course receiving them was again a sort of extra second layer uh, of gifting uh, after all these contributions then seeing what everyone uh, did to them and I I thought it was really funny because I I feel like there's a very strong relation between every single choir and every single sort of individually designed uh, section mm -hmm. but uh, in terms of techni technicality, it was very different where I thought, okay, okay, just looking at the InDesign files and how everybody builds their InDesign is clearly yes. very, very different. So yes. that, was, uh, that was really fun to see. But I thought it was really surprising how well everything in the end fitted together. Um, of course, partially because there's this strict grid of uh, it has to fit in this and it has to uh, adhere to these and these rules, such as, you know, that there was going to be um, um, these sort of tags on the on the sides of the pages and saying, well, this is, um, yeah, like you see on the sides of the pages here and that there needs to be a navigational uh, line at the bottom. So everyone had uh, to adhere to that. But then whatever happens on the pages it was completely up to each individual designer and still somehow when I um uh, when I go through the book it has a little bit of a book within a book feel at times mm -hmm. but there's definitely a sort of coherent line uh, in it which was to me a very pleasant surprise because I thought like this is going to be all over the place which would have been fine um but I think in terms of reading uh, this book and making it easier to handle it's a, it's a very nice surprise mm -hmm. No, but um, the, the 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 text and and just with the simple like the simple grid that's just there, it made it so. If you flip through it, I don't know if anyone in the audience has seen the book, but yeah, it's um and also of course this like this black and white kind of filter that that's been put over it, uh yeah, also gives it kind of like a like a big flowy flowy feel to it, but. Yeah, because that's that's we really try to also in the choice of paper, uh, try to have this this feeling of collage and of accessibility. And I think that uh, without tooting our own horn um, too much, I think it came out uh, um, pretty well. But maybe to dive into uh, the content of the book a little bit more, what I said, I think, uh, um, just at the beginning is that sort of this reflecting on publishing and reflecting on the role of books um, um, in, the, in the present and in the future is something that's really at the core of our practice uh, at Valise. And it's not that we sit down every day and say, oh, what's the future of publishing? But it's something that really sort of guides us in, in the way that we do. And sometimes we do sit down and really explicitly um, talk about it. But as the contributions started pouring in, I was just super pleasantly surprised to see how much um, um, individuality was in the contributions. But at the same time that there were a couple of core um, elements that uh, a lot of people apparently had at the forefront of their mind. And uh, one of these is sort of the tactility um, of the book and, and what paper means and, and what accessibility is and what working together is. And um, that's also one of the reasons why uh, I've invited Jesse Muller uh, to be part of this conversation, because she wrote um, what I'm <laughs> a sort of future story, if I can, uh, a fictional future uh, story, if I uh, summarize that correctly, uh, Yes, which to me was both 
funny and dystopian if that's uh, if that's at all possible um and i thought it was really interesting considering you also have such a strong background in both book selling and distributing and publishing so maybe yes you can uh, talk a little bit more about your contribution like give a brief uh, um, uh, introduction into what it was and and how you got to it yeah so um hi everyone i'm yes and mother um yeah, so it's funny you say that that is a kind of a funny story but also dystopian and it, it definitely is like a, a fictional short story um and i was also very happy to to see that it was categorized in the sci-fi uh, section of the book which i really loved but um yeah when uh when the open call came from Fali's, um i was really thinking about what should i write and I was really thinking about what, yeah, what do I want to write about the future of publishing and the future of the book, and um, I, I also remember like uh, what Pia said before that Astrid um, from Fallis that she also said something like, uh, you know, just start with something that's really close to you, and I just really had to think about also my time. Um, I'm, so I'm working as a um, a representative uh, for several. Uh, uh, art book publishers at the moment, also Fallis, um, and also as a distributor and a publisher. Uh, but I started my, my book career, so to say, uh, about 15 or 16 years ago as a bookseller in a bookshop. Um, and so I really had to think about that time. And so I kind of was drawing from that, uh, that experience as a bookseller and working in a team and collaborating together and but also just having a lot of fun in a working in a bookshop. Um, at first I was thinking like, oh, I'll, I'll write this very wild story um, that's taking place uh, 72 years from now. And then when I started writing, I thought like, no, this is just too far away. It will be 20 years. And in the end, I was thinking like, this is actually what I've written more something uh, that is possible already in the future for yeah uh, in about five years um, so it's more about this team um, that is um, is working in a bookshop which has a new trend and that is making um, making books from paper paper that they're um, manufacturing themselves within the store so you can um, you can yeah uh, bring your old books or your old clothes to the bookshop and they will make it into a new book. They have this this warehouse where they make paper, and uh, uh, yeah, it's just it ended up being a very uh, almost satirical short story about this team going wild making paper. And um, yeah, on the one hand, kind of close to my background as a bookseller, but also very far away from what I'm doing now. So it was a very fun fun uh, open call and assignment um, from Fali's, I think, and in contributing to this book. So, yeah. Well, I'm very, I'm very glad to hear that it wasn't a, a straightness <laughs> task for you uh, uh, to undertake. And um, I think my biggest takeaway, uh, not only from your contribution, but from a lot of the contributions that we received, was just the, the the amount of attention that people um, paid to it, which was which was truly truly a gift um, uh, to receive. But maybe to dive into uh, the subject of the book a little bit more. Of course, it would be great to say with that with making this book, uh, we now have an idea of what the future of publishing or our book publishing is going to look like. Um, that it answers all of our questions that I think uh, everybody who has work in, who is working with books is uh, trying to answer. And I don't think it does that, but what it does do is um, give you all these points um, and directions in which you can think. And I, what I mentioned before also is that there's such a, um, there's such a, an overlap between the way people think about it. And we identified the themes, of course, which is how the book is uh, uh, ordered. But I think even between that, you, you see a lot of things that really um, make me hopeful. And I think that's great. I think for years and years, um, and also it's something that I'm I'm interested in myself, we've, we've said like, oh, um, 
with the rise of the digital um, ebooks are going to take over uh, the the place for the paper book is diminishing um how will we deal with this and this is something that a lot of people also touched on and i think what's very interesting is that in this book that i think maybe 85% of people are advocating for the paper book. They are saying like this tactility, the experience of the object, uh, the, the timelessness that a paper book has is something that we value and that we cherish uh, forever. And of course, that's something that we've been talking about a lot in terms of uh, what will happen in the next few years within the book business. And now we've asked people to like speculate on what will happen in the book business in 75 years so sometimes um the 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 stories that people have come up with are a little bit out there or or would fall in the category of sci-fi but i think the basic idea of the paper book still being extremely important was something that um Austin and i felt and feel very strongly about but that also resonated with a lot of people who handed in contributions and it's not so that everyone um is preaching to their own choir, if that's how you say that, that everybody is in the business of making books. So it's it's natural that all of us would say, uh, or it's logical that all of us would say, yeah, the paper book needs to survive because what else would we do? Um, but it was also people who were a little bit further outside of that, uh, that core group of uh, that's in bookmaking that are really appreciating um, the paper book as the future of the book. And I think that's that's a shift from maybe um, 10, 12 years ago when uh, people in the book industry were really, um, I wouldn't call it scared, but hesitant about what if there would be a place for the paper book. And I think over and over and over during these last few years, and this book is a is a is very much proving that, is that 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 space will be there and the appreciation for the book will be there and will continue to be there. And the paper book is not being replaced by uh, its digital version. And not to say that there is not space for this uh, digital book, but um, it's something else. And um, that's something that I also want to invite Lotte and Jesse maybe to reflect upon uh, with me is that as a publisher that we notice that um, Indeed, the appreciation for the paper book is not diminished at all. When we go to fairs, um, young students come up and they 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 want these books, they want these paper books, and it's only almost only from the uh, world of academia that people are asking um, for digital versions. And maybe yes, uh, um, because you, of course, deal with a lot of different publishers and have dealt with uh, uh, the distribution channels of books. Can you reflect on that a little bit? What's your experience? Yeah, yeah. So I also, like you say, I see it a lot um, uh, on book fairs as well. Just uh, people are so excited to to see the books that we publish, that you publish, and um, yeah. Um, I think, yeah, this appreciation, it will definitely, yeah, it's it's already here, but it will definitely stay as well. And I also see it with um, uh, sort of representation work that I do when I go around to bookshops and talk to buyers and um, presenting your books and books from other publishers, that they, they usually already know how to place a book oh, I, I have customers that will definitely be interested in this. and um, But also just really about the quality of the books themselves, how it's designed and uh, just the paper. And I think also now we're at a place that there's so much possible um, with publishing and um, yeah, working with different papers. And this I, I also see in, at book fairs and uh, talking to buyers that this tactility of the book it's uh, it's very important still and I think it will yeah it will continue like that as well um, this interest in it um, and how is that for you uh, Lotte sort of from the design perspective um, I know you personally have a have a, a fondness of paper, but do you see any shifts towards a more digital practice for yourself or or can you reflect on that? Mm, yeah, I think I mean it, this is almost a bit like common knowledge, right? That uh, first the music industry when everything became this like di digital thing and 
people were like downloading music it was a uh, the, the the scare but of course final is like out of control it's like it's like bigger than ever almost and people want to have a physical object because the moment something becomes like a physical thing that manifests itself in your reality it's something that you can yeah touch react upon like interact with and when things stay digital I think they feel maybe also more anonymous like people hide I mean they share their thoughts on the internet but there is a, a lack of physicality which makes them maybe feel anonymous or in in invis if invincible or invisible and that goes both ways so it's like you know like uh people are not seen some people are more seen but there is this like this lack of interaction that and I think maybe also especially after the whole COVID thing that people are so happy to be out and about and to meet with people again and that yeah like books and also going to a book fair to like a bookshop that there is a I mean yeah the experience of also discovering something it's yeah I mean your body is a it's a <laughs> yeah these these sensations happen like in real time and I think yeah the online world is not really there yet I don't know I think the next step right is going to be wearing like your crazy glasses and reading like through a book and things like popping up and all this shit <laughs> I don't think that that's ever going to like take away the experience of uh yeah just being in reality I don't know sorry it's very vague for me as a designer it's not 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 something I'm extremely busy with I think in terms of accessibility yes it can be really nice if all the books would be available digitally that you could like buy them for like a smaller fee because also still for some people like the most of the Felice books are between let's say like 20 and 30 euros in some translating that to currency in some countries that's like quite a lot of money so you know making them like yeah available for a cheaper price or that is nice to also yeah spread that information in a different way I think could be cool I think audiobooks are also a big thing I'm also really curious how you could maybe how we could work work on that like with all the police books that are being made I mean there's still like a lot to explore and yeah I think I agree I think there's there is a lot to left to explore and I've I've Seriously, never considered an audiobook. I don't know if our books would necessarily be um, suitable for this because I think some can be quite dense. So if you um, uh, would listen to them back to back, it might be it might be difficult. But it's but, definitely but maybe like a short short version, or I don't short... know. Like for, for me, there can there can be music or like a soundtrack, or I, I I think sometimes it's nice to think how to make it like even more alive or really then not to make it like just a straightforward audiobook but then it becomes like a new work and I don't know I think that's really interesting and also tying in what I see somebody in the audience saying is uh, like the the idea of a sort of multi-layered book where uh, uh, a physical book has a digital companion and that's something that at least we have been experimenting uh, with a little bit we have this series called making public that's specifically about this like how do you reach a public uh, what is the the digital realm um, how do you go about that and the subject matter discussed in that is is wide but what we've decided to do for this series is make a physical book that's the starting point that's the collection but very often because these subjects uh, that are dealt with in these books um, is so explicitly digital it feels really weird to somehow ignore it or try to desperately translate that into a paper as much as I love the paper um, so what we do is is um, um, have a have a sort of digital counterpart, and it's not a direct translation of the book. It's not the ebook. It's not a PDF. It's not uh, uh, something you can download. But for example, um, the first uh, recent edition we did was called "Curating Digital Art." Um, we made a timeline, so there's a digital timeline on a website that. Um, sort of refers to the book and the book refers to the to the timeline and vice versa so there is an exchange between um, the digital and the and the paper the paper book and and for me I I feel like this is where um, the future is that that we we see readers looking for more content themselves 
And why not as publishers um, try and curate that a little bit and see what can we offer that's a, a little bit extra to uh, all the information in, in the book. And it's of course great that, I mean, I can't show a video in a book yet. So um, I love it if I can uh, uh, do it in a different way, but at the same time, um, from, a, from a publishing perspective, it's new. Um, how do you deal with it? How do you deal with um, uh, all the copyright issues that come with, with this? How do you make sure that something is durable? And um, um, yeah, how does it fit in sort of the ecology of, a, um, of the book trade, I suppose? So that's something that we're still trying to figure out. But what, it's definitely a lot of fun to uh, um, experiment with. But I feel like it's still... Um, at this point, uh, and of course there's exceptions because I've seen some really, really great projects out there, but for us, it's still um, a little baby that needs to be fed and uh, comes a little bit to the side of our core business, which is developing these books and developing these projects. But to see how we can integrate it is something that I think is really interesting. And also something that... Um, that we we saw in the contribution to future books where where people were speculating about this and whether that be some like VR stuff or um, you know if you're speculating about the far future um, that it's something that's somehow projected into your head that people were talking about and that's 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 very fun to think about and I think in the near future um, yeah this digital component is is probably um, going to be very important. And then at the same time, um, there's also this development of all these new tools that are working with. And that's also something which I did not expect uh, to happen with this book. But what actually was apparently on a lot of people's mind was this development of AI. So I think we have five or six contributions of people who are either about AI, which have been written with chat GPT or imagery that has been um, uh, generated with AI. And even one of the designers of the choir used AI to make her design. And um, we've printed the entire conversation that she had to get to the point where she was. And I think it's super interesting, but also a little bit where... Um, for me, it's very speculative um, to see where that's going. And I don't know, Lotte, if you've ever considered using any of those tools, or is that something that you can imagine um, will be integrated in your practice as a designer or no? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, yeah, I, I, there, there is nothing that I'm doing that I, I would not want to do myself. I don't see it as like a obstacle or something I would want to yeah you know I like to do all the laborious work as well I think for me sometimes that's even more more fun to do but yeah I mean I get it but I also think like it's just it's something that yeah it's on your mind and you see it and you see people using it but maybe it's also it's also fine it's not for everyone and if also for Lise is just like sticking to a thing that's proven time and time again that it's just a very meaningful and very useful vessel you know that anyone can kind of print and you can ship it around and yeah I don't know it's it's such a yeah that that you get a book from an artist that lives on the other side of the planet and yeah it's a very different interaction than seeing somebody's Instagram where they post like their work it's you feel that you can also kind of keep it and also that's how I look at my own bookshelves these are things that I also want to kind of treasure and sometimes some books go and sometimes this is like no this is with you already for like 20 years because you also feel that there is like value to uh, treasuring it um yeah because that's that's just what we do right it's just this uh yeah endless accumulation of things that we we appreciate and then this is going to be my 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 not my legacy but like your it's my inheritance <laughs> I don't know something like that so uh, yeah yeah understood I think um I agree for the uh, uh, for the most part and and um maybe to to uh, summarize this a little bit uh, before we go to questions is that um 
for us, it was, and I, I know I can speak for my colleague, Astrid, who was super deeply involved in uh, um, developing this book and, of course, uh, starting Valise, is that it was such a joy to, to see everything come together and that uh, we wrote the, the, the epilogue uh, um, and the closing words uh, for this book and sort of our feelings really came true where we thought, okay, the art book is the place where... Um, uh, ideas are consolidated. The art gives people uh, a space to um, experiment. And uh, this book really brings it together for us. So we are uh, thrilled with the results. That's great. Thank you, guys. I'm sure we could keep on going um, forever because there's so many interesting things to talk about. And there's some really great questions in the chat. I'm going to be a little bit selfish and ask a question I have first. Um, I'm just wondering, after putting this work together and reflecting on the last 20 years, obviously, as you started the project, you all had your own thoughts and feelings about the future of books. And I'm wondering if now that this project is finished and you've spent time with all these other con contributions and thoughts, what sort of has changed for you? Um, and if any of the work that you engaged with in this process, um, how has it sort of changed how you feel going into, like how does the role of valleys change or what are you excited about? What are you afraid about? What do you think needs to change? What do you want to change? And it's kind of directed to all three of you, like not only just in a business kind of how you're gonna continue the business of the publishing, but also in your own work and in your own practice. I think um, it, this working on this has stamped me hopeful. It's um, um, what I really like is that um, there's such a not only in the process of making this, bringing this ginormous group of people together uh, to work on this book, but also in terms of subject matter of the contribution, is that I I feel a very strong sense of community. And um, that's also where I think the future lies, is that uh, uh, within the art world and within the art book world specifically, that people are very dependent upon each other. And um, reading this book, working on this book really actively make me make me feel that. And um, that's that's something that really filled my heart with joy, as sentimental as it sounds, um, is to see that there is all these different people, all on their small islands, working um, uh, in the end towards the same goal or with the same goal in mind. And that's that that was great in working with this, but that's also, I think, the strength of the future is that we can only continue if we do it together. And that uh, uh, is consolidated in this book for me. Yeah, I was going to say the same thing as Pia, actually, <clears throat> when reading all the contributions for uh, future books. Um, I also feel this very strong sense of community and also, yeah, just very hopeful about how positive everyone is about the future of books and um, about there still being bookshops and um, just yeah, printed books. Um, and it, it just makes me even more motivated or more excited about the future of books and collaborating with other uh, yeah, publishers and writers and bookshops. So, um, yeah. I, you don't, I have don't know. To ask. <laughs> yeah, sorry, I, I, nothing, to, nothing to contribute, sorry. No worries. Um, it looks like a lot of the, the attendees here are intrigued by the design process. Um, one of the questions was, did the designers see parts that were already designed or what others were working on or were they all kind of doing it on their own? Uh, no, everyone uh, was basically doing it on their own. And I think Lotte, you may have seen some um, some choirs at, at one point, but uh, no, they, uh, and I don't know, of course, if they secretly didn't share it with each other, because I'm fairly sure that some, uh, some of them know each other, but not uh, through us, we really thought, Take it where you want it. Uh, don't uh, feel like you need to be inspired by the work of others or don't feel like you need to uh, create a coherent whole. Take it wherever you please. 
And I'm, I'm very happy that we did because they are so different. And uh, I feel like everybody's own voice is, uh, is represented through their design. So I'm glad that worked out. Um, a question that could be directed to all of you again as well is, were you surprised by any of the themes that you saw running through the contributions? Did anything kind of jump out or give you something to think about that maybe you hadn't before? Um, well, what I mentioned before is that a lot of people seem to have AI on their minds yeah. more than I expected. And also, um, you know, there were a couple of people where I thought, oh, yeah, that's right up your alley. So you might uh, do something with this. But there were other people where I was like, I had no idea this was something that was on your mind. And they uh, did something that was so that was one of them that uh, really came through. The other um, uh Thing, what I found really interesting is that uh, um, somebody came up with this idea that I don't know how to call it in English, but in in, in the Netherlands we have this system with um, cans and bottles that um, uh, if you hand them, it, you pay a certain extra amount when you buy, for example, a, a can of soda, and then at the moment you hand oh, yeah. it back to the, the store, deposit, yeah, 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 you get you get your deposit back, and then somebody came up with this idea for books. And they were like, you can, we, you can do this so that we can um, sort of extend the longevity uh, uh, of books and their life, their life becomes longer. But there's also a way to tie you to the bookstore a little bit. And I thought that's so clever. I never <laughs> even thought of that. That's just so, uh, um, so smart. So that, that was really uh, fun. And I think a, a last one that really stood out to me is um, in a, in a very, Touching way is that uh, from these two uh, publishers um, who have a, a, a publishing house in Ukraine. Um, and of course, it's extremely difficult for them now in uh, the war situation that they are in. And um, they sent also photos uh, of a, a book presentation that they held uh, several months ago. And that was interrupted uh, because of a bombing and uh, they had to continue it in the shelter. And that really touched me because it's a group of, I think, 50 people in the midst of a war still going um, to a lecture about art books, still deciding that at this time in their lives, it's important enough to take the risk to attend this, which I thought I mean, it almost made me cry. It was so uh, uh, beautiful. So that, again, ties in with that sense of community, but also with the importance that, that books um, take in people's lives. And that, uh, yeah, I found extremely beautiful to see. That's awesome. Thank you. Um, another kind of more, I guess, technical design question. Um, Lotte, can you speak to maybe the challenge of designing the book? Um, there is a Dutch and English version and kind of um, making sure that they both worked and were cohesive. No, there's there's just the English version, right? Have <laughs> I now? Oh, okay, yeah. sorry about but, that. Yeah, and yeah, in in right, Pia, what did you want to say? Or was translation an issue? No, there, it's a it's yeah. a the, the, uh, both Dutch and English in the same book. Yeah, that's sorry, that's what I meant. Sorry, sorry, sorry. sorry. bilingual book, right? Oh yeah, I I I was not really confronted with that. Like, uh, uh, I, I, I don't know, I cannot really speak on behalf of all the other designers, but I think at least half of them, they they speak Dutch or I mean, like all of them, they've been living here for quite a long time. So it's not an unfamiliar language to them. But I kind of I, I did really like that, that some contributions kind of stayed in their original form and maybe language had not so much to do with it. I think all of them, there was like a translated version like next to it or that at least everyone could kind of read it. But yeah, there, there's, that's also so that language has just like a form on its own and then you don't want to like disrupt that because that, that's just the way it, it, it is, you know, it, it's just yeah. a thing in itself. And then like, yeah, that's, uh, but for me, it was not, I, I had nothing, uh, I, I didn't design one of the, like sections of the book so for me it was just uh English all the all the way right except right. for the for the cover where you had to put all the titles <laughs> is that oh yes um um for me yeah I'm sorry I'm a designer that is a little bit language blind like I <laughs> I I 
I see an image for me is really hard I'm like oh yeah that's true it's indeed it's in English and Dutch but yeah see if you ask me this question I'm like oh yeah that's it right that's great um I think we're just about ready to wrap up um just going through the questions one more time uh yeah thank you so much Pia Lotta and Jessa for joining us today that Thank was you for really having us. Very inspiring. Um, you were kind enough to share the PDF of this book, and I'm still requesting a physical copy because I can't wait to see it, which kind of just speaks to what you've already talked about and that passion for like the physical, actual paper books. So that's great. Um, well, thank you so much. And thank you, everyone who uh, uh, took the time to uh, join us here. It's much, much appreciated. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you, guys. It was really nice. Before we go, we'd love it if you could provide feedback on this session. We'll drop a link to the survey in the chat. Please take a couple of minutes to fill it out. We'll also be emailing you a link to a recording of this session as soon as it's available. Lastly, we'd like to thank the Department of Canadian Heritage for their support through the Canada Book Fund. Thank you all for attending. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thank you.